What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I got this freezer that they called in for the fans not working. And here are the racks that's powering or feeding this freezer. This is rack A. This is the low temp rack. And you can see we've just got a bunch of nonsensical information here. At least we're maintaining the suction set point. But if I go to circuits, you can see that under the temp, we have none everywhere and the only thing this controller does like this without any temperature sensor inputs is controls defrost so that evaporator being froze up because there was no fans I'm going to cycle it into a defrost and if you need to log into these most of the time the default password from the factory is user and then pass and then that that'll get you at least into that level of access so then you got to hit, uh, you know, find manual defrost and then choose, uh, you know, defrost or emergency defrost or whichever and hit enter and get out of there and you'll see that it, it switches to defrost to pump down. So here I am about 10 minutes later and defrost is working. That's good. Got to move these pallets out of the way. Now, I've already noticed the problem here. It's so elementary, you guys. It's, it's so ridiculous. You take a look. Some pendejo knocked this off the wall earlier today, probably with his forklift or whatever the hell he was driving. And then he probably also realized that the fan stopped working afterwards. As a result, these um, evaporators have just been freezing up for about four or five hours. I'm not sure how much ice we got up there. I guess we'll see here in a minute. Hopefully the defrost cycle, or two of them, worst case scenario, three of them will get all the ice off. Okay, no, I get it now. See, this is what happened. There's no stopper here. This door doesn't have a stopper. There's probably supposed to be a stopper here so that when you close the door, so that when you're closing the door, the weight of the door has something to stop on other than that. Climb up the ladder here and take a gander. Oh, good. The ice is all gone. Oh, that's very nice. That's very nice. Let me see. Ooh. Yeah, all the ice is gone. Okay. Still think I'm going to hang out for a little while and suck up the overtime. All right, then. My circuits are now flowing again. I don't know if you can hear that or not. But I can. So, they're flowing. Let's go see what we got. Oh, let's see what we got. That's the problem. And this is just sad, you guys. Like, the poor people that have to work here, you know? Like, they can't even get a, a door frame heater. One more time. Okay, so I want it to get cold in there pretty fast, too. So I need something that's going to hold that like that. So it can start getting cold in there, and we can drop that temperature down to maybe 10 for like 30 minutes or an hour wrap around it that way and then pull it up and wrap around that's what's up I'm talking about right here that's exactly what I'm talking about we need those over there and we don't have them also these are the other stoppers for the other direction I've only got two of these that I'll be able to use so they've got quite a few different holes here. I'm gonna need to line it up to where the magnet closes right there. Cause you see, if we go too far, the alarm starts tripping. So we gotta have the door close right there. So what happened was a little bouncy thing broke off of it and they had to do without it. So that's why there's two different sets of holes up there and down here and then if, if you're like me and you only got two screws to work with it's better to have them go across from each other like this instead of like two up there or two over here you know it's better to have them across like that puts a better hold on it you know and the most important thing is to not strip the threads so 
that's a good hold so is that and tomorrow I'll go buy a hardware store Lowe's or something Home Depot and I'll pick up new hardware probably bigger ones more or less like this one this is the size I want to get which is the actual size of the bore right here that's the biggest I can go pretty pretty damn close to the biggest I can go and now I'm kind of I'm contemplating whether I'm gonna mount that in place or just leave it like that for the night until I come back tomorrow because if that knocks that one off again then it's not going to work again if that's the case so I should probably just wait now here's my wires that go to that box so all this is is a like a light switch it's a it's a single circuit you take the black wire off of that blue and the white wire off of that blue and you put the two blues together and it does the same thing that, that switch does over there all right and there that is so now my fans are back on and my door switch doesn't have power, so it can just be left hanging there. I'll come back tomorrow with those things, the screws. I'll put those bumper stopper things on, and I'll see if I can order some, the little rubbery things like like, like that one, you know, to go on, on, on those, so it's not so loud. And then after I do that, I'll wire that over there back in. This thing, no working, no more. It doesn't do nothing at all until I wire it back in. So I just do it up over the top like that so it's not dangling like a, you know. Well, so this video wasn't supposed to be this long, uh, but it was, so whatever. Uh, that's it on this video. Just a little bit of ingenuity and, uh, I mean, this one was too easy. I prefer to have more of a challenge, really, when I go up on a freezer not working. But either way, I figured I'd show you guys the idiocracy sometimes that we come across. Thanks for watching.